Hello friends, so today we'll see uh, what is OSS uh, and how does it work. So basically OSS is known as the operation support system. Uh, so operation support system are used in supporting management functions such as network inventory, service provisioning, network configuration and fault management for network. So together with BSS which is business support system they are used to support various end-to-end -end technology uh, telecommunication services. So BSS and OSS will have their own data service responsibilities. So acronym OSS is also used in a singular form to refer to all the operation support system viewed as a whole system. So basically different subdivisions, subdivisions of OSS have been proposed by the TM forum, uh, industrial research labs uh, or OSS vendors. So in general OSS covers at least following five functions. So it will cover the network management systems, it will cover the service delivery, it will cover service fulfillment including the network inventory, activation and provisioning. Uh, it will also cover the service assurance and it will also cover the customer care. So let's see a brief history about OSS. So before uh, 1970 uh, and around that time, uh, many OSS activities were performed by manual administrative processes. Uh, however, it became obvious going onwards that much of this activity could be replaced by computers. And in the next five years or so, uh, the telephone companies created number of computer systems or software applications which automated uh, those activities. So this was one of the driving factor uh, for the development of the Unix operating system and the C uh, programming language. Uh, the Bell system purchased their own product line, uh, PDP-11 computers from Digital Equipment Corporation uh, for variety of OSS applications. So OSS system used in Bell system, uh, those included a AMA TPS, CSOBS, and uh, many uh, uh, as we can see on the screen uh, OSS systems from this era are described in one of the journal uh, which is Bell system Tele technical journal so if you want you can search it on the internet now many OSS systems were initially not linked with each other and those often required manual intervention for example uh, consider a case where customer wants to order a new telephone service. Now, uh, in ordering the system, would need customer's details and details of their orders. However, they would not be able to configure the telephone exchange directly. This would need to be done by switch management system. Now, details of this new service would need to be transferred from the order handling system to the switch management system. And this would normally be done by a technician. Uh, and technician will be rekeying the details from one screen to another and this process is often referred as swivel chair integration. Now this was clearly another source of inefficiency so the focus for the next few years was on creating automated interference between the OSS applications. Uh, so cheap and simple OS integrations uh, was the major goal of the most technical companies. Now let's see what are the key elements of the OSS. A lot of work on OSS has been centered on defining its architecture. Uh, we can simply put there are four elements of the OSS. Uh, processes which is known as sequence of events. A data that will be the information that is acted upon. Uh, then we have applications. Uh, applications are the components that implement uh, processes to manage the data. And then we have technology. So technology is basically how we implement the applications. Now let's see what is the four layer model of OSS. Now during 1990s, a new OSS architecture was defined by ITU telecommunication uh, sector. Uh, they defined it in their TMN model. Uh, which is known as the telecommunication management network. Now this had established four layer model of TM and applicable uh, within the OSS. So first level was business management level. Uh, 
next level was service management level then we had network management level and then we had element management level now a fifth level is mentioned at times uh, being the elements themselves though the standards speak of only four levels now this was the basis for later work now network management was further defined by iso using the fcaps model so fcaps means fault configuration accounting performance and security uh, now this was adapted by itu uh, tmn standards as a functional model for the technology base of the tmn standards now although the fcap fcaps model was originally conceived and is applicable for an i2 enterprise network it was adapted for use in the public network also by telecommunication services tn standards now a big issue of network and service management was the ability to manage and control the network elements of the access and core networks so basically access network is the customer side network where customers can directly connect to the devices and they can access the internal network now internal network is known as a core network uh, as we are know I, as we know that uh, the network is a very huge uh, is a, a global network and for transferring data over large distances there are internal core networks of organizations which connect the continents together so that is known as a core network now historically many efforts were done uh, in standardization basically so that a standard protocol can be defined for network management however uh, there was not much success after that there was IT, IETF SNMP protocol which is the simple network management protocol and that became the de facto standard for the internet and telco management at the EML NML communication level uh, from 2000, 2000 and beyond uh, with the growth of uh, network broadband and VoIP services the management of the home network is also entering in the scope of OSA systems and in the network management so there are a lot of uh, such interfaces like EML NML interface terminals etc are used for this management so this was the basic information about OSS now it's a very important concept and uh, it's widely used in uh, today's world so I will create some more videos around OSS uh, so if you like my videos uh, please do subscribe to my channel thank you